to start off by being quite controversial. By uh, do you know? And the thing is, I. The thing is with this, there's a, it's going to put a lot of people. It'll, you know, a lot of people go on about this, and I, I have a little rant about this. There's a thing. There's a thing. If you've ever seen these like top ten guitarists in the world, there's a thing that Slash is the best guitarist in the world, and the real reason that Slash is the number one guitarist in the world isn't because he's the number one guitarist in the world. It's because the keywords and the search terms uh, are skewed because people do search for the word slash, but what they do is they're searching for it for coding. And it's used in lots of different app uh, applications. So the thing is, it's just a popular search term. And when people do the research to find out who the best guitarist is and everything else like that, they put in slash and they see how many results come up. Then that's the thing that tells them. And I think on YouTube, we suffer from this thing where it's like, we, we do that. Right. I try. I, I, I do a bit. I try not to because I, I want to deliver to you guys what I think is important will actually make a difference and be transformational in your guitar playing. That's it. So this is why I, you know, L7 grids no, never going to rank. No, there ain't millions of people searching for that. But there are millions of people searching for. Searching for. This. Let me see. Is this going to work? The circle of fifths. The circle of fifths. Now, the thing about the circle of fifths, it's great. It really is. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, guys, because I'm going to say something that counters what most people say. The circle of fifths is great if you've got it in front of you like that on a wall. Yeah. And you're using it and you can just glance at it. But if you're in a jam session... You're jamming with your mates or you just you haven't got one with you. You know, you haven't got it. You, you haven't got one. <laughs> one in your pocket. Yeah. So what we do is it's like we're, we're, we're a bit flummoxed here. Now, the thing about the circle of fifths is that everybody uses this, you know, comments on the circle of fifths and makes videos about the circle of fifths because it's got lots of search volume. People are searching for it. People want to know what it is because there's this myth that it's that it's the bee's knees. And it is the bee's knees if you are a jazz person. You want to play giant steps. Yeah. But you I think you'll find actually from the the um from the perspective of what people want to learn song-wise, it isn't always jazz. My missus, she hates it when I play um uh jazz she hates it when i do that so the thing is I, I know it's not for everybody yeah but the problem i have with this is that it isn't easy to memorize it isn't easy to memorize and this is the thing right this is the thing right let me just show you you can see that top three there so you can see in the key of c easy Easy peasy. You've got F, C, and G, which are your major major triads. You've got D minor, A minor, and E minor, which are your minor triads in that key. And then if you do a bit of lateral thinking, then you know if you come to this one here and you change it into a diminished chord, then you you find your uh, uh, seven chord. Yes. So this is the thing. So that's okay. But generally, what I find is is that people they don't remember it. They, they don't memor it, memorize it. They can't remember it. They can't remember it. They see that. They see that there. Yeah, that's great for the key of C, key of A minor. Yeah, you can see it. Yes, Gary, for those two, five, one chord progressions. Those two, five, ones. And this is great. Like I say, you know, I'm not fully knocking it. I'm just saying that, you know, that the cycle of fifth is great for key changes. Key changes, jazz stuff, yes, but you have to memorize it, and it isn't easy, because I'm I've put this up here, I put up the key of C there, but can any of you write in the comments, tell me honestly, that you would r be able to memorize what the rest of it was, and especially down here, six o'clock, yeah, down at the six o'clock area, you know, can you see that? Can you see? You tell me the truth now. I want you to tell me the truth. 
Like my mum used to say, tell the truth, shame the devil. Yes. So we'll put that one back up. Look at that bottom bit here. B, G flat, D flat, G, do, 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 right? And look, and then, and then you're a beginner and you're thinking to yourself, G flat, F sharp. G flat, F sharp. Hang on, which one's what? Which one's which? Which is it? Can you see how confusing it is? You see how confusing it is. So the thing is, that's what I'm saying to you. That's what I'm saying to you guys. Hang on, let me just see. Can I switch over here? That's what I'm saying. It's like YouTube, the nature of online stuff, the trending things. Some things get more search traffic. So creators, what we do is we make videos around it. This I'm saying things here that creators do not, do not want me to say. Yeah, so it's really controversial. Yes. Okay. But the thing is, the thing is, guys, that like that, that isn't the way for guitar. Not for guitar. Piano? Yes. You know? That's all that stuff. But the thing is, it isn't going to show you on guitar. And the thing that we need to learn on guitar is the circle of fifths. Right, okay. The circle of fifths works if you count up from the thin E string. You go E, B. You know, it kind of it goes up that way. But the guitar, the way we play stuff, it's tuned to the cycle of fourth. So essentially, even then, you know, that should be back to front. It should go around clockwise C, F really, for it to be a true cycle of fourths, for, for it to be relevant to guitarists as a tool. But we use both because the thing is, um, because of the way that, that uh, um, no, I won't go down that route because that is a video that's coming up. I was going to say something there, right? And we, we can look at it in, in other ways. Yes, you can work out your, your key signatures and everything else like that, but that isn't, but it's still not the easiest way. It's still not the easiest way. You know, why do you think I do a lot of videos on Battle Ends and, do, and Down Goes Charles's Father and telling you that backwards it's Father Charles goes down and ends battle? Why do you think I, I do that? Why do I drill that into you, into the, all the lessons? Yeah? It's because that's all you need to find your key signatures, right? So, okay, let's have a look at that. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that today. But I do have a lesson planned about that. If I had my second camera, I would be doing it. So, right. Rant over. I'm not going to rant about the cycle of fifths anymore. Okay? We're done with that. We're done with it. Okay? Because, in my mind, we have an easier way to work our way around it. And the first thing that we need to know is we need to know the notes on our E string. The notes on our E string. Let me see, will this pull down just a little bit more? Let's tilt. There we go. There's my notes. My notes. N-E-R-T-S. Yes. Uh, oh, let me get rid of that um, little uh, thingy there. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so we, we are going to play this. And the first thing we need to do is we need to learn the notes. Now, I've got a playlist on my channel and it's all about... It's absolutely all about finding your way around the fretboard using alphabet letters. Yeah, last week's lesson, we got into intervals and that's another way of understanding what the notes are. Right, okay, so this is the thing, right? And Fed, look, you said that, you're just looking at the cycle of fifths and it's, it's, it doesn't stick. It doesn't stick, it lives off the guitar. It doesn't live on the guitar, unless you're coming up. Brilliant for violin. Violins tuned in fifths makes absolute sense to me. Yeah. So, so here, I'm, I said I'd stop ranting about this. So what we've got, hook it. Okay. Hopefully you can hear that, guys, and it's a nice balance. Is that okay? So, so the thing that we need to know first, we only need to know the names of the notes on our E string. That's what we need to know first. Yeah. We don't need to learn the circle of fifths first to be able to play in any key, okay? And, and like I said, I'm going to extend that. I'm going to extend that as well. So let's look. So the thing that we need to remember is E and F, B and C. If you know what I say, type it in the comments. What do I say in the key? What do I say in the key? 
What do I say? For the key. Yeah, and uh, for um, for th these B and C and E and F. What do I say? What's the mnemonic? What's the mnemonic? I shouldn't be reading these comments because they put me off a little. Okay, so look, I'll start. We've got the E string. Okay. Then what happens is we get F. So E and F. Jaws, if you want to think of it that way. Yeah? E and F. And if I play it on this string, it's still E and F. But the shark's much smaller. Yeah? Half step. So look, so we've got that E to the F. Eggs, yeah, eggs fried, bacon crispy. There we go, we've got it. So those are the ones that we, we've got semitones or half steps. And that's all we need to know. That's the equivalent of one fret, going up one fret. So what we do is, all we think is, is, is it E and F, B or C? If it isn't, then we're going to go up two frets. Okay, so there's F. Okay. And we know that, okay, that rule doesn't apply because after F, F and G. So that's going to be a whole step apart. There is something that goes in the middle. Yeah, and that is going to be either a flat or a sharp, depending on the key. Um, I think I probably need to address something about keys. There's some keys that are have... If you've got a key with seven sharps or, or seven flats, or sometimes six uh, sharps or six flats, it's very, very hard to, to kind of figure out what the notes are to read them off the page if you're sight reading, if you're learning a piece and you, you're reading it from the dots. So what we've got to do is we've got to dismiss some of the keys. The key of C sharp, yes, the key of C sharp, we don't, we don't, we, we don't really want that one. We don't want that one. We want an easier one. And the key of D flat is much easier. So really, there's just 12 keys. So the way I see it, we have to see this E string in two ways, two ways. We have to see it for its notes that we can get from it, but also see it as being tonics for our key, right? And this is the whole purpose of learning the E string first. So we've got the E, F. Now we've got this G here. So in between, we've got this, this note here which is either, if, because we're raising it, it's sharp. Yeah? So the way I say, say this is if you sat on a drawing pin, yeah, a sharp thumbtack on your chair, you jump up. Yeah, So a sharp makes you jump up. So we go like that, jump up. Now, if you had a, a puncture and you had a flat tire, then it would go down. So flats go down, sharps go up. So we take the F. We raise it a half step, that becomes an F sharp, but it also is a G flat. Now, the thing is, which key is going to be the best one for us to, to, to use that as a tonic? This is the one that's a bit tricky. This is the one that's a bit tricky because F sharp can be a key, G flat can be a key, and it's a personal preference. I tend to think about flat keys as being more, more akin and more to do with jazz and blues and whereas sharp keys those are rock keys and rock and pop sort of things but if something's a bit jazzy a bit bluesy generally you find a lot of those keys it's going to be in a, a e flat or b flat or something like that so here but that b flat that uh, uh, g flat there right so so just explain what's going on in the middle but what i'll do is i'll carry on and and i will count up in the natural notes but i won't add the sharps or flats so I'll go e f g Right, G, G to an A, is that, does that come under the bacon crispy eggs fried rule? No, it doesn't. So A is going to be here at the fifth fret. Okay, so look, we've got that A there. We're going to go up a whole step again, A to B. Right, hang on, hang on, B, 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 there's mention of a B. What does B mean? Bacon crispy, oh yeah. And that's going to be there, like this. There we go. So there's B and C there. We've got another another shark, probably a different breed. Right, okay. We've got this. We've got the shark here. There's C. And then we go up a whole step to get to a D. And then we go up a whole step. We get back to E, which is signified by the double dots, which means if we carried on up in the dusty end of the neck, it's just a repeat of the same thing. So that's E, F. Here's Jaws again. Hang on, is this going to be your Jaws? Listen to Jaws here. This is a really small shark. Right? 
So we've got Jaws there. That's a good way to kind of get that E and F. Right. There. Right, we've got those guys going on there. But remember, if we were here between the A and the B. There, right, we've got that A and the B there. This would be B flat or A sharp. Now, A sharp, we wouldn't have that key. So the thing is, it's going to be the key of B flat. It's just a little bit easier to memorize it in that way. Yeah, so we've got to figure out which of those those keys are going to do that. Um, I will be doing a lesson on that very, very soon. I'm going to record it tomorrow, in fact, and we'll get that edited and that'll be out in the next couple of weeks. So I'll just show you how to think about this. But I did do a lesson on learn your E string first, and it's that's actually in the book as well, uh, towards the, the front of the, the book. So we've got these 12 keys and essentially what we can do then is we can nominate one of these notes here on this E string to be the tonic of the key. The tonic is similar to a root note. It kind of works in the same sort of way because it's kind of saying this is home because a root note says this is the home note of the chord whereas the tonic says this is the home note of the key. So we're thinking about it in that, in that way. So when we play the key, and then, okay, hang on, Ricky, what is a key? What is a key? What is a key? Okay? The key is the key to playing everything. Understanding key is critical. The key is basically a family of chords that all work together. Yeah? They sound great together because they come from the same ingredients, the same parent scale, if that makes sense. Yeah? So... We're going to look at the first one. I'm going to do this. And I've got uh, this uh, diagram, this anagram, <laughs> dianagram, lady dianagram. I've got a lady dianagram here in the side. And we're going to pull that up. So here is, we've got this this one here. This is the tonic of the key. So because this is on the open E string, then what is happening is that th this is going to be our tonic. It's an open E string, so it's going to be the key of E. The tonic defines the key. So if we if we move, we're going to move this up and we're going to move it into some other positions as well. So the red dots, these indicate, you know, if you were looking at your cycle of fifths, these would be those three major chords on the outer ring. Yeah, and these would be the three minor chords on the inner ring. Right, the inner ring. Okay. All right, don't worry about that green one. You know what's coming, maybe. That's what it is. Right, so, yeah, you know, uh, so we've got chord one there, chord four there, and chord five there. I'm just wondering, can I add an it myself on this? Can I add that? Will it go on there? Hey, look at that. I, I did that. I did that. It happened. Yeah, can you see me on there, guys? Can you see me? Am I there? Am I on screen? <laughs> Oh, little things, little things make, make, make me happy, you know. So, okay, so I was going to do this. So what we're going to do is I'm going to just show you. Where am I? I'm here. Right, so I'm going to show you how this works, okay? Um, uh, uh, right, okay, so look, watch this one here. This is my E major chord. So look, that is my open E. So that's going to be the root, that's going to be the tonic for the key. But remember, we follow the red pattern to find chords one, four, and five. Now next, what we do is to get chord four, we have the open A, and then we move up to the second fret, we get chord five. So look, play. I'll play those for you. Because they're all major chords, yeah, we're going to go one, then we're going to go four, and then we're going to go five. Right? Yes. Notice I play that with my pinky like Brian May. Yes, we've got that there. And then if you play that. That's what happens when you hit post 50. You become a mild thing. <laughs> Less wild thing, more mild thing. So, we've got this here. Okay. And we've got that. But the thing is, the blue dots, those are our minors. So what we do here is, because the, um, the 
these notes here, let me just wiggle them on screen. So this one here, this one here, and this one here. Because those guys are on the E string, yeah, those are gonna be, those are gonna be E shapes. Look, that second chord there, even though it's a minor, I'm putting an E minor shape on. Look, pull that down there, that, okay? Move it up to chord three. The ones that I'm going to wiggle now, so I'm wiggling this one, yeah, wiggling that one, wiggling that one, wiggling that one. In fact, I'll wiggle the green one because somebody didn't like the green one. Gary didn't like the green note. Yeah, so let's have a look at that. So we've got, we've got, <laughs> wait, that means we've got A shape, A shape, A shape there. So look, but this is an A minor shape here. So, all told there, we've got one, four, five, two, three, six. That's the easiest way to see it, guys. And that's what you have to do. You just have to play around with this thing. But like I said, I was going to extend this. I was going to extend this chord. And what I'm going to do is I don't like purely root, third, root flat third, flat fifth diminished chords. Look, so we've got... It's chord six here, and what we do is the green one here. You can see it's a whole step above chord six, and that's what you do. Just look at it. Just look at that green one there. Yes, yes, the green one isn't just for jazz, right? So now we've got our root note. Let me just di disassemble this chord for you. We start with an A shape, right? We know I'm going to play. I'm going to play an actual minor seven flat five, which is chord seven extended and add in the seventh because it's just a little bit nicer than than the just a, a, a diminished stack it just is yeah it's a bit it's a bit more fruity so, so we've got four five six seven so we've gone up a whole step here right there's the fifth let's flat it we've got a minor seven it's gonna be there and then we've got the minor third here. so let's play it like this flat five guys and that seven that chord really 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 wants to resolve a half step up to the tonic in fact do you know what i'm going to do i'm going to drag a note there look i'm going to recolor can i recolor that can i color it okay no oh yeah i can recolor that i'm going to override the color on that one and oh where is it override the color i can't see it okay doesn't matter it doesn't matter no, okay. This is where I, you know, I started getting cocky, didn't I? I started getting clever with this, thinking that I had it sussed. This, uh, this whole uh, technology thing down. Hopefully, I'll leave that there as it is. It's fine. You see where that black note is there? That is the tonic yet again. So that's the tonic. I could even actually, if I go to this one here. Oh, was it crashed? Oh no. I think neck diagrams has crashed, guys. Okay. All right, we might have to reboot that one. Um, so, so what we're going to do, you've got that there, so you can see that, anyhow. So, one, four, five, six, then we get chord seven. Look, and I can pile myself back on here, onto the one chord. It looks like the colour picker. Who spot, where, where's that? There's Because there's lots of stru stuff on this screen. Where is it? The colour picker. <laughs> Let me just do this. Is this going to help? No. Does that help? Colour picker. Where's the colour picker? You're right. It probably is the colour picker. Because colour pickers do that, don't they? Where is it? Uh, no, it's not letting me have it. Let me just get this. I'm just going to... Uh, hide this I might disappear I might not disappear nope um, the color picker where's the color picker oh. <laughs> behind your my face all right okay in the video feed right okay where's that oh so that means it's somewhere hiding it's over here Tied it over here. I've got it. I found it. Well done. Thank you. I thank you for that assist. 
Yes, appreciate that. You're my Kevin De Bruyne. Yes, wonderful. There we go. Right, okay. So let's change that one. Let's change that to be in the red because that's what we started out doing. And then if I just change that over, then that will make sense because that is going to be called one again. That's going to be called one again, right? Guys, look at this. Look at this. Just look at this. Hang on, let me move that there back again. This is a right mess, isn't it? I did, I did wonder if it would be, but as long as you're fine with it, the, 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 the stuff's good, right? If I go like this, look, one. Let me change the color of that one. All right, and then what I'll do is I'll do another one. You see, I've just jumped up into my string pair. The A few weeks ago, I did a, a live where I talked about how this worked. Can you see where the 145 would, would live on the uh, A and D strings? Someone was saying that earlier on. What about the A and D string? Yeah, you can see it works there. Yes. <laughs> Thank you guys for bearing with me. I do appreciate it. So you can see we could really just start the, the whole L7 grid again. But the shapes, because this one, hang on, I'm going to wiggle this one here. What string is this? So what shapes can we have on that? What what shapes could we have on that one there? Type that in the chat, guys. Type it in the chat. I sound like I'm on QVC selling like inflatable mattresses or something. Type it in the chat, guys. So, <laughs> so look at that there. What shapes can I have from this from caged? Yeah, the easiest one is 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 the string that it's on. Yeah, because those are the bar chords. We if we get through that. A yes, there we go. The answers are coming in now. Right, this one then. So this shape, remember from the caged chords, from when I did the and C. Yes, Matthew, we can get A and we can get C shapes because the root note we would generally find. On the A string and you can see here yeah you can see there that would be the D shape the D shape does not share with any other shape the root note yes um, a minor shape uh, time profit that's uh, no um, it won't be an F there's no such thing as an F chord there is no such thing as an F chord it's a myth. Yeah, so so we've got that there. But what I'm going to do is, just for clarity, I'm just going to get rid of those guys there. I'm just going to keep that there. Right, okay. So the cool thing is, is that hopefully you understand how this works. Now, because of where, where how this works, yeah, what I like to show you is some other uh, interesting things that are going to gonna happen um, with this E here. All right, so we're in the key of E. The relative minor, this is the thing. Chord six, guys, chord six. If I change over, is this going to be a, a mess? Yep, there we go. <laughs> right, no, see, look, it's all going wrong. There we go. No, no, that's not it. That's not the one, Ricky. Right, I don't want this one. I don't want picture in picture. There we go. <laughs> oh, my God. Can you tab that wonky chord? Yes, you can... You and tab it. Right, okay, so here, what we've got, what we've got is we've got chord one, four, five, six, flat seven, and then we've got chord one again here. But what I want to show you is, and, and I'll use different colours this time, because what what's important is to get this little pattern, this little three string pattern for your box one of your minor pentatonic. Now you all, you probably already know it, you know, this is the thing. Um, and, and let me just, I'm going to put a different colour on here. I'm going to put this on here. I'm going to use all these black ones here. So this is the pattern. This is the pattern. I'm going to put this, because we're in E major, the relative minor for that is C sharp minor. So I'm just going to play this bit here. Now you might recognise this from your box one of your minor pentatonic. So this is the application. This is what I'm doing, is I'm just showing you the application of putting this in here. It's not the Aeolian, well, it could be the Aeolian mode. It could actually be the Aeolian mode, but I've just put the minor pentatonic in there. Okay, so we put that in there, but this pattern here, just notice, I wonder if I can grab these all at the same time. I might be able to, which would be extremely useful. 
Um, I don't want the fretboard as well. I want that, I want that, I want that, I want that, and I want that, and I want that. What I can do is I can place those guys and I can plonk them on chord six because that's the correct position to play them. They're not going to move because there's something already there. Okay, I get that. Right, let me just move these guys. I'm going to move that over there. Move that over there. And I'm going to move that one over there because we're going to use them again. All right, but let me just show you. What we can do is we can take this and then we can start to build another area of the fretboard here. All right, so this is a really kind of cool thing that you can do here. If I'm playing here, I've got this. What I've got there on that sixth chord is where my box one minor pentatonic really lives. Now, a lot of people will go and put it on the tonic. Nothing wrong with that. It works as well, but it doesn't work as sweet as it would do on chord six. Yeah, so, so I can play that there. that up that pattern up there now hopefully you can see what we get is we get this pattern here which is a minor third then we get a major second major second this little string set the diagram's gone let's have a look I wonder if I can just drag it into the no I can't I don't know if I can drag it in no? No, it's just dragging it over the top. Um, let me have a look. See if this one... Hey, but I'm gone. <laughs> but I'm gone now. Let's have a look. And let's see. Can I pull myself into there? Yeah, I'm back again. I just pull myself in and out like that. It's probably easier, isn't it? You know, than faffing around. So hopefully you can see that that's what's going on there, guys. The graphics should be back on screen now. Yeah. <laughs> Ignore these these three colours here though at the side there. They mean nothing. They're not part of this uh, idea here. Now, what's cool about this is yeah, I can take these ideas. Look, so it's exactly the same pattern. It's exactly the same pattern, and I just move it. Look, I'm just going to move it into the correct position, and it lives there. So that's the the same pattern. And if you want to get into that, then what I did was um, what I call threes and twos. Uh, where if you play your box pattern and you play and let me play it here in C sharp we get we get uh, that's what I would think of as being a, a wraparound or an overlap we get three hold steps like that and then we get two minor thirds that form something that I call the big rectangle and because this is an E string and that's an E string, they mirror each other. Yeah, hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> I'm not getting this well, am I? You need to see me eyes. Right, okay, let's get rid of I tell you what, let's put it back. I can actually just turn the thing off. Let me just turn it off. There you go. Woo! Right. Hopefully I can get this other camera working and then we can get rid of this. <clears throat> so, okay guys, hopefully that should make sense because this is in the key of E major, right? And you can see that the shapes that I'm talking about are your box standard bar chord shapes. These are your, these are the, the first sort of bar chords that you get to grips with. Yeah. Got an A minor shape here. I got an A major shape here. I can play an A like that as well, although I do... Play it like that. Depends what you're doing. Okay. Okay. So and because we know where that is, the whole step up to get to that seventh chord, we know that we go up a half step to get back to the tonic again. Okay. And then we want to go and get over there and into the D shapes as another subset of that. But let me just show you something else. I want to show you another way that we're going to do this. Let's just do this in another key. Yeah. So what we'll do is I'm just going to pull this into 
Um, I'm going to pull this into the key. Let's have a look. Let's do it in the key of... Let's do it in the key of... Well, yeah, let's do it in G. Yeah, actually, let's just do it in G. I'm going to move it all over. Look, can you see? There's the seven shape. And here is the L shape. So L7. That's why I call it the L7 grid. All right, let's move this this one here. So what happens then now with this is because this one here, that is six. I did wonder if I could actually put a, a letter in that. If I could put a number in that. Can I put a number in it? Text box. Can I put something in there? Ooh. So I'm going to call it six. Let's have a look. Will that work? Is that even better? Is that better? Does that make any more sense? Text. I'll change the color of it so that it stands out a bit more. Hey. Hey. It's getting posh now. Right? Okay. <laughs> So that's six. So we take chord six, and then what we can do is just to show you that we can apply this as well. If we remember about this this thing here, this hand symbol, yeah, right. When you do this hand symbol, yeah, we can use that to find the major or the minor pentatonic. So look. So if I I'm here, I'll just do it in A for ease, right? Because then it's easy for you to see. That's the root note uh, for the chord one. It's the tonic use for uh, either a minor pentatonic what we're going to do is we're going to use exactly the same pattern but instead of starting on the index finger we start on the pinky which is why I use this as a, as a kind of a, a signal to show you we can do that down there yeah minor pentatonic using the same box but we're still starting on this same note here so if I take this on the diagram I'm just going to take this down here all right I'm going to put that there I'm going to put that there then hopefully I might have to switch this one out a bit yeah I'll switch that one out just so that you can see where the minor pentatonic is going to live in and amongst this in the key of G Remember, we said that this one here, wiggling it, yeah, that one there is the tonic. That's the key of G. So if I play, start on this note here, this note here, and this note here, and then go to this note here, and this note here, and then I, I could actually just play the open G string here, and I'll just show you what I mean. How do we memorize the major pentatonic sound? Scale, we go, we think, uh, my girl. Yeah, so we got that there. But we could also see some of the chords starting to form in there. You see that G chord, uh, where that lives in there. But just switching that back again, I'm just going to take this one away, I'm going to put it over there. But just switching back so you can see where that tonic is here. Fret three, that's the tonic. So we're going to go chord one. Chord four, chord five, but I know if I play those, I've got that scale that just lives there. But I like how this works. I really, really like how this works. Yeah. So, <laughs> I can't remember who is it said. Who was it that was said they didn't like the green one? Yeah, you're not going to like that green one there. So what we can do is we can. Can I copy and paste that? Oh, can I get two of them? Oh, no, I can't. I can't copy and paste it. I can have chord seven just below. Because chord seven is always a half step. It's always a half step uh, away from the tonic. It rises to it. If you think about it, T-do, T-do. That's it. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, T-do. Yeah? So we've got T-do, T-do, there. That's how that works. But not only can we get it, um, let me just see. Can I get another one? I'll get, I'll get another chord seven here. Can I change the color? Let's hope this color picker doesn't um, do one on me. So look, you can see that we've got chord seven here. And we've got chord seven here as well. So this is how we just put those in there. But the main core of the L7 grid helps us to keep on track of where we're at, yeah? So we're building all this around the L7 grid. That's all we're doing. We're just building it around the L7 grid. 
Um, and this is a completely movable thing. So, like I say, we can move this around. But also, don't forget, if we can do this here with this chord 7, let me just move this down here out of the way. Yeah, and I should just play that for you, actually, because here's, here's chord 1. Remember I said half a step down. I'm going to play that as a minor 7 flat 5 as well. Yeah, it's a jazzy sound. Minor seven, we put the flat five in the index finger down there. Yeah, and I'm muting the A string and the thin E string on there. Yeah, now listen to how it resolves. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. I like that. I like how that works. Um, I'm going to move that. That's not going to be happy moving itself over, over there. But then to just show you again, if I replace this bit here, and we're going to double our fun here now with this because we've got the scale in more than one position. Where does that one go? It goes there like that. <laughs> and then that goes, oh, what's it doing? All right, okay. And then it goes here like this. Flying by the seat of my pants here, guys. I am on flying by the seat of my pants. Um, and you know what? It's a lot of fun. It's fun. <laughs> it's guitar. I get to talk about guitar to people. <laughs> How cool is that? Yeah, right, okay, so look, so we've got this, we've got the G, major. Right. Now bear in mind, yes, let me just show you what you can do is you can link this up. There. We know this is the key of G, look, the, the, you can use this with your open chords as well. You've got G, A minor, B minor, C, D, E minor, oh look, there's a... Right, diminished. So we can move this all the way up if there was open chords as well. But if you want to do a solo and you want to do it in the correct key every time, then what you've got to do is you've got to find chord six. This is the thing. So you've got one, four, five, six. Ready? We'll watch the rest later. Enjoy your tea. I hope it's a good one. Your tea's ready. That's what my mum used to shout down the stairs when I were a lad. In the Scots accent, accent though. Your tea's ready. It'll go cold. It'll be in the dog. <laughs> if you if you didn't come down, your tea'll be in the dog. Yeah. So, okay. So we've got this going on here. All right. And hopefully you can see. That's the same shape. Can you see how it connects? Can you see how that connects there? Yeah? Pretty cool, isn't it? So we can do that with pentatonics. But the thing is, the thing is that if I just get rid of everything else, yeah, then what happens if I get rid of all of this? The key to it all... <laughs> Yeah, if you uh, pardon my pun, yeah, is, hang on, I should have done that one there, is to start with the L7 grid. That's what we do. We start with the L7 grid. This is where we launch our box one there. And I will say that when we do that, we do that there like that, and I was just showing you there. If I've got all my chords here... <laughs> And I know that this is here. I know that this is zero, that this pattern is here at zero. Well, zero is the same as 12, because they're an octave. So that means I can play my box one up here. Yeah? Okay, Martin. Okay. 
Seven L for you then, mate. It's okay. I don't care. As long, do you know, as long as you remember it, as long as you remember it, and as long as it helps you, I don't care what you call it. Yeah, I don't care as long as you see it because this is the thing. Guitar for me, it's about shapes, and the shapes is going to tell you where you're meant to be going. So this is this is what we're looking at here. Look, so put a logo on my t-shirt. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I've got some t-shirts that have got that on. I should do a giveaway with those, actually. I keep on meaning to. Uh, I should, I've, I'll come up with a competition. What kind of competition could I do? Um, I could do a competition where I say, okay, write a chord, ooh, that's a good one. Write a chord progression, write a chord progression in a key, in a specific key. Give you some homework, because that's what you need. You need some homework. It'll keep you uh, on the straight and narrow. Hang on, that's the wrong colour there, Ricky. Um, and focused. And give you something to do, contextual. Right? The homework. Let's do it. Shall we do it? I'll give a t-shirt away. I've got I've got a t-shirt. I've got some t-shirts. Uh, I've got some Ricky's guitar t-shirts. Chord progression. Let's do a chord progression uh, using the key. I'm gonna change, I'm gonna change the key now. Look, watch. You see how this changes? That first red red dot is my tonic. Let me just move it up. Oh, I'm not going to do it in that. That's the key of B flat. Ordinarily, yeah, because look, that note there, look, look, that note there, that's the B flat. So that's the key of B flat. You don't even have to know, you should know, you should know this, but you don't even need to know the names of the chords. You just need to know the shapes. Look, so I just show <laughs> I just show you, I shouldn't be saying that. I shouldn't be saying that, that's bad, Ricky. Right, but look. It's just shapes. And I just know where they are, and I just remember them as being for one, four, five, six, three, two. There's one, my diminished chord's gonna be here. Yes, so so this kind of way of looking at it, you get to that point where you don't, you don't need to name everything. In a scale like one, three, five, two, two. Th those are gu guitar. Those. What would I call it? What when you practice scales by? Well, that would be um, um, that would be a chord scale. Yeah. Yes. I. Th those are good for uh, for um, stuff for um, improv, if especially for 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 jazzy sort of style stuff and for sequences. You know, it sounds very sequential anyhow. So look at this. You see here. So we've got this. Yeah, one, four, five. But do you know what? I'm not going to do it in the key of B flat. I'm not going to do it in the key of B flat. That would be mean. All right, I'm going to do it in the key of A. So the competition to win a T-shirt, right? What you have to do is you have to, um, I, tell, I don't know, follow me on Instagram, at Ricky's Guitar. Hang on, can I pull that up? This is all off the top of the dome da uh, here, guys. Let's have a look. Instagram. See, I've forgotten what my uh, uh, name is on there. I think it's Ricky's guitar. Instagram. Home. Where's my profile? Yeah. Okay. Ricky's guitar. Right. Okay. So let's do this. If you've got Instagram and you want to join in on this competition, all right? Here's the here's the URL for my Instagram. It's in the chat there, guys. All right. Here's the homework. It's homework. Homework gives you context. The keyword, yeah, so I can find you, because then I just I just do a search and see see who's who's got it. The keyword for it would be Ricky's guitar, yeah, like that. It's not going to come up like you know. So if you put that right, what I want you to do is I want you to play, I want you to create, record something. Um, it's up to you if you want to just leave a link or, or something. You don't do Instagram. Okay, this might be the, the downfall of my plan. Um, what we do is three, four chords, do a chord progression, and then play these minor pentatonics that are associated with this as well, like we did before, yeah? On chord six. So we take that one there, look. We'll, we'll bang that there. Remember, so we play that pattern there. And we can also, let me do that. Will that, that exchange it? Oh, right, okay, that's cool. Uh, and we can do it here as well. I want to see you. I want to see you 
do it do it in the Facebook group. You could do it in the Facebook group. Yeah, it might be feel a bit better. Or if you're in the fretboard fraternity, you could do it in the fretboard fraternity. Let's not do Instagram then. But follow me on Instagram anyhow. Um <laughs> so, okay. God, I feel right mischievous all of a sudden. It's do you know, it's it, because I know things are like I'm on a precipice. It feels like I'm just a giddy about to I'm on a roller coaster. This this <laughs> this um this technological uh, balancing act I'm doing right now, it's just like, it's absolutely ridiculous. I can't tell you how stressed it's making me. But there you go. There we go. Right. But it's fun. It's still fun. Right. So we've got that one there. That's what we're doing. Right. If you want to do that, bang it in the, uh, if you want to bang it in the Facebook group, yes, you can do it on Instagram. I will check all of them. Right, and we'll see. And because it's homework, and because it's homework, it has to be in. It has to be in for next week, for next Wednesday. So if you're thinking about doing it, then get it done, and get it get it banged into any of those places. Join the Facebook group. Drop a video if you feel confident enough. This is only if you feel confident enough. Yeah, yeah. That's only if you can feel confident. Three, four chords. Yeah, that's if that's how it helps you in the key of A, add these little patterns here, do a little solo, all right? And then what I'll do is I'll pick a winner. I'll find one of those random picker winner things, maybe if I can, something like that, or or I'll get my daughter to pick one, or, or I'll I'll filter them out and we'll see. We'll have a look and then and then whoever wins, I will send you a Ricky's guitar T-shirt, and it, the Ricky's guitar T-shirt. Looks a bit like this, because <laughs> I can do that there with this. Look, I can, oh, can I? Can I? Oh, look, there you go. So look, it, it's there. It sits on your chest there, like that. So I'll get, I'll be in touch with you and tell you if you've won. I didn't know I was going to be giving away a T-shirt today. How much fun is this? Yes. So, okay, this is the technological. Um, the the uh, tell in, tell telephone It is something called neck diagrams two. Yes, um, neck diagrams. Yeah, so if you do a search for neck diagrams, then you'll find that there. Um, I haven't, I don't really use this that much because I generally make all my diagrams myself in uh, in a vector based program. But they look, do they, do they look decent enough? Yeah, they look decent enough, don't they? So, okay. So we've got that one going on there. So, um, right. So the thing of it is. Where do you need to post it? In the Facebook group or on, um, uh, or you can post it on your own profile, but put the hashtag Ricky's Guitar. Um, uh, and I will search for that hashtag and then hopefully it'll, it'll bring you up. Yeah, uh, hopefully it'll bring bring you up there. Right, what we're doing, how are we doing for time now, guys? Yes, so um, I was going to explain something um, to do with tetrachords, but like I say, the other camera, the second camera, didn't want to play and let me go back to this so and i wanted to get into something called tetrachords because that is the truest and i think the best way to deal with the cycle of fifths the circle of fifths but hopefully you've got from this guys that you don't need the cycle of fifths to show you where the chords are for the key you just need to know where the l7 grid is and you move it around appropriately key of b find the b note we can find the chords like that. Now, if we don't like them in this position, there is a video on this, and it's called the 7-7 seven, seven grid. Yeah, you can't argue with me like, about that one. It does look like a 7 and a 7. So what we do is we go down a minor third. Yeah, we, go, we travel through here. So this is the tonic for the major. There's the chord 7 root note. There's the chord 6 root note. We can play the... the um, two, three, and six chord here. Yes. Play that there. And that expands how far you can play um, your chords all over the neck. And it overlaps with all this stuff. Can you diagram in keynote? I have no idea what keynotes is. In keynote, uh, as in um, 
Max actual software. I think I've got Keynote. Yeah, <laughs> I've got Keynote. Um, uh, I'm not sure. I never used it. Um, so apply the that to the grid. Um, the reason you want to do this as well, as I will say this, uh, uh, is because once you know where that, that box one is, is, say we did this in the key of A where we've got that there. Once you know where it is down here, you can tap into all your Chuck Berry licks. All your, um, all your Jimmy Pages. All those licks, they're all going to be in that position. And you can apply them into the, into the other positions. And kind of um, what I was thinking was, just to wrap this up, if we're looking at this in the key of A. Yeah, if I'm using chord 6 here. If I was using that there, there. Then what I'm thinking is, is, well, what box pattern does that live in? And it lives in box pattern 4. Of your minor pentatonic. Yes, this is going to be in the next book. Yeah, I, I was thinking today. I've, I wonder if I've got enough lessons for another book. I might have. I don't know. We'll have a look. Um. Uh. So. Yeah, this is all going to go in 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 the next book. Yes. Hey up, Phil. Yes. Uh, hit the like button. Yeah. Hit the like button like Phil says. Yeah, I hate saying that because it's just so, so cheesy. Um, but what I will say is that, that I would appreciate if you have a guitar playing friend, if you can share any of my videos with them and, you know, and maybe explain it to them. Because, do you know something? I always say this because when you teach, you learn twice. And if you teach it to a few people, then you really, really know how these things work. Okay, so that's that's that. I think that's I think I've just about hit the limit of what's probably enough. Yeah, and know when to stop. Know when to stop. That's what that's what my mum used to say. Know when to stop, Richard. Sunday name. The Sunday name used to come out. So, okay, so um, yeah. So there's that competition. There's that competition, and I should. I'll write out a post for that, and I'll put it in the um, the Facebook, and I'll put it on the Facebook page, uh, and uh, that stuff. And yes. So who thinks that? Yeah. Actually, Red Walrus just said something there. Yeah. Who thinks this is an easier way of figuring out where the chords are for guitar, specifically guitar, than using the cycle of fifths? Hang on, can I pull up that? No, I, I'm not going to do that because that means I, I'm going to probably pull up something uh, else. I'll show you my email or something like that. And we don't need that. Um, you don't need to see my spam. Okay, so, hey, Nancy. Yes, hopefully this makes sense to you guys. Um, and hopefully next time I'll be able to um, uh, figure out this technical issue, even get my, my prompter up and then I can, you know, look you squarely in the eye in the... Um, in the camera, um, you know, Sandy, did it make sense when I said uh, uh, about shifting it over, Sh just shifting it over because the L7 grid works on any string, two pet, two strings, string pair that's tuned to a perfect fourth. Okay. Yeah. Leave that, leave them with wanting more. Always leave them wanting more. Yes. Okay, guys. So here endeth today's lesson of, um, I hope you have an absolutely splendid uh, weekend. Um, I know I will be. Um, and I really, uh, you know, I, um, thank you for turning up today. And, oh, hang on, I've put the thing up. If you don't own the book, this is me. Oh, thank you, Guitar Jams. Uh, oh, thank you. Pair character cheerfully blowing a party horn. I love that. Um, I get a descriptive version of that. Let's put this back up here. Hang on, no, no that's in the wrong spot, Ricky. Bang that back up here. It's been mayhem, but do you know what? It's been fun. Yes. You just need to figure out. It's just the same thing. Watch this video. I did it in the middle, Sandy. I did it somewhere in the middle. Yes. Yeah, hey, Joe from Jimmy is the circle of fifths. Yes, it is. It is. Um, with something else as well. There's another way of looking at that. There's, there's two ways of looking at uh, Hey Joe. So hopefully that makes sense. If you haven't 
you haven't bought my book, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. I, th I think it's it's a worthwhile investment um, in your guitar knowledge. Um, and yes, uh, and yeah, and I've got another. Oh, there's Al. There's Al. Hey, up, Al. Um, and uh, yes, I will have something special because Al's here. And look what I got about an hour and a half ago, Al. What did I get? Hmm. What could this be? What could this be? And do you know what? I'm going to be a proper YouTuber and I'm going to do an unboxing. <laughs> you're welcome, Marcel. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah? I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you practice this stuff. Okay, guys. So, yes, um, I will bid you a fond adieu. Look after yourselves and I will see you in the next lesson. And I'll see you in the... And I'll see you in the, the, the comments and everything else uh, as well. All right, guys, take care. Much love. See you later.